Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. A circle and a semicircle are inscribed in a unit circle as shown. The ratio of the area of the green circle to the area of the orange semicircle is 4. Find the radius of the orange semicircle. Okay, at this point you may want to pause the video and try the problem yourself first. Okay, let's get started. So as always, we're going to be making some connections here. So let's go ahead and connect the centers, which will be very helpful, right? So let's go ahead and make a good connection here all the way down. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect the center of the large circle. Okay. To this point like that. Okay. That will help us too. Okay, so let's go ahead and designate some lengths here. We're trying to find the radius of the orange semicircle, so let's call that A. So let this length be A. I'm going to call the radius of the green circle B. And this length I'm going to call C, just this piece, okay? Because I'm going to actually need to set up an equation using that length. Okay. I could also designate the length of uh, the radius of the big circle uh, as something, but that's not necessary. Okay, so since that's C, this will be B minus C. Now I can just go ahead and write my equation. So we do know that green to orange ratio, green to orange ratio is 4, and we're supposed to solve for A, okay, which is the radius of the semicircle. Okay. Let's go ahead and set up our equations. Now, first of all, consider this right triangle. That's very important, right? Okay. So we're going to be setting up the Pythagorean theorem there. So let's go ahead and write it down. That's going to look like a squared plus a plus c quantity squared is equal to. Now, we know that this is a unit circle. It's given. So then the hypotenuse is going to be 1, right? Because that's the radius of the large unit circle. Awesome. So that's one of the things that we know. Uh, well, we do need another equation, right? Obviously, we have two variables. We're not going to be able to find ratios if we, you know, get stuck with this. So, and what are we supposed to find? We'll set that up later. But let's go ahead and uh, find another equation that we could use. And that equation actually is kind of interesting. It doesn't come from the Pythagorean theorem. It actually comes from a basic fact that the radius of the unit circle is 1. I hope you see that now, but I'm going to tell you what it is. This is the center, so this is going to be 1 as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and write it down. That's going to be 2b minus c is equal to 1. So this system is what we're supposed to work on, but again, they're asking or they're giving us the ratio, so let's go ahead and write that down now. What is the green to orange ratio? Let's go ahead and set it up. In other words, what's the area of the green circle? Well, since the radius of the green circle is b, its area is going to be pi times b squared. And the area of the orange semicircle is going to be, since the radius is a, the full circle is going to be pi, I, pi a squared, but we just need half of that because this is a semicircle. Okay, here we go. So green to orange ratio, and that's given as 4 in the problem. Pi cancels out. If we do work this out a little bit, like I would say divide both sides by 2 because this 2 is going to be flipped. So then from here we get b squared over a squared is equal to 2, meaning that b over a ratio is root 2, which means b is equal to root 2 times a. Okay? Since we are looking for a, it will make sense to be able to write b in terms of a. Right? Okay. What are we going to do next? Well, what we're going to do next is just use what we have. First of all, we know that uh, B can be expressed in terms of A. That's good. But we also have this equation here where we have a B. So let's go ahead and work that out. Uh, since uh, we have the B there, we can just go ahead and write it down like this uh, using the first equation. So in other words, we can just replace uh, from this one. I can just replace the C with... 2b minus 1, right? 2b or not to be. I always make that joke. Okay, replace the c with 2b minus 1. 
in the first equation, that's going to give me a squared plus a plus 2b minus 1 quantity squared is equal to 1. That comes from our first equation where we use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, this is the breaking point. We're going to replace b with root 2 times a, and we're going to be getting an equation in a single variable. But make sure to stick till the end because the answer is going to be interesting. Okay, let's go ahead and do the replacements. So we have this a plus 2 times b, which is 2 root 2 times a minus 1 squared is equal to 1. Awesome. Now we can just go ahead and do something nice here, put this together. So that's going to be like 2 root 2 plus 1 times the quantity a minus 1. And then that whole thing is squared and the sum is equal to 1. Okay. Now let's go ahead and expand the expression inside the brackets. That's going to give us a squared plus. So this is kind of like x minus y quantity squared. So we're going to be doing the x squared first. Let's go ahead and do that. So it's going to be this squared times this squared minus 2ab or 2xy. That's going to look like 2 times the 2 root 2 plus 1 multiplied by a plus 1. And that is equal to 1, which is nice because then we get rid of the constant term. Awesome. And now we can just go ahead and set it equal to 0 and do something nice. But let's go ahead and put this even more together. Uh, this is going to equal, if you square the first and the last terms, it's going to be 8 plus 1, which is 9. And then this is going to give us 9 plus 4 root 2, this number here. And then I'm just going to add it to 1a squared, which is going to give me 10 plus 4 root 2 multiplied by a squared. And then I'm going to be getting minus 2 times 2 root 2 plus 1 times the quantity a is equal to 0. Obviously, what we can do here is, this is not even a quadratic because obviously a equals 0 is not a valid solution. You can make a equal to 0 by making the green circle larger. Obviously, there's a way to do it, but that's not what we're looking for because we do need a ratio of areas, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides by a, which is non-zero, and then we're going to get a nicer, nicer equation. Okay, let's go ahead and get that. It's going to be this one and that one. See, it's not even quadratic. Nice. Then I'm going to go ahead and isolate it. So from here, I can just go ahead and do this in steps. Uh, 10 plus 4 root 2 multiplied by a is equal to, I can go ahead and distribute this, 4 root 2 plus 2. And then I can just divide both sides by this quantity here. So a is going to equal 4 root 2 plus 2 divided by 10 plus 4 root 2. Obviously, we don't want to leave it like that. We want to rationalize the denominator. So let's go ahead and multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate, which is this quantity here. And then the top is just going to be distributed, right? Let's go ahead and do that. So I can just go ahead and multiply 4 root 2 times 10 is 40 root 2. 4 root 2 times negative 4 root 2 is going to be negative 16 times 2, which is negative 32. 2 times 10 is 20. And then 2 times negative 4 root 2 is going to be negative 8 root 2. Okay, so that's going to be the top part. And the bottom is just going to be the difference of two squares, 100 minus 4 root 2 squared, which is 16 times 2, which is 32. So we're going to be getting 100 minus 32 from here. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify this further. I have four, 40 root 2 minus 80 root 2, so that's going to give me 32 root 2, okay, minus, that's going to give me negative 12, right? And then what I'm going to do here is just divide, okay, let's go ahead and divide it by 100 minus 32, which is equal to 68, okay. This could still be simplified, obviously, right? We can just go ahead and divide both sides by 4. And a is going to give me 8 root 2 minus 3 divided by 17. Okay. I think this is a good point to stop. Thank you for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.